On one cold morning in Leicestershire, four Nottingham Trent students are hatching a plan. They want to take this van, which costs just 100 quid and doesn't even work properly. They want to paint it like this and race it from here through Calais, across here in Switzerland, to here in Naples. Well, actually, they made it as far as here in Rome. It's a journey of over 1,200 miles and they want to do it in just four days. Welcome to the road to Naples. Last time on the road to Naples. The team got wet, got drunk, got to Calais, broke down, fixed it. Fake GB sticker, exhaust snapped, bypass fuel filter, wood. Made it to Switzerland. And now on the road to Naples, the team find themselves nestled deep in the heart of the Alps. Last night, Mark Hicks drank to excess, celebrating reaching Switzerland alive. Uh, when I had a few drinks, Met some random guy called Adrian, drinking with him in the hotel bar, and then the next thing I knew it was half past four. He's still asleep when the team reached the start of the next leg of the race. It's decided a little wake-up call is needed. By water. Oh, 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 it's the wave. <laughs> you never know when the wave's going to get you. <laughs> Switzerland. <laughs> I regret meeting Adrian and going for another beer at Harper's Fall. Yeah. After a quick photo with everybody involved, the team are on the road. Um, I was absolutely beside myself with laughter, as I'm sure were the uh, 500 other people uh, standing staring at Mark in his drunken stupor um, as he got drenched, uh, both in the van, running around outside the van, screaming on top of the van, um, and everywhere else that you can think of. It was just a classic moment. Worst 15 seconds of my life. I just ran out of the van confronted with mountains and lakes. But a minute later, and they're lost. Nothing, we just need to uh, work out where we're going. Work out where we're going. And five minutes later, the team are forced to pull over again. It's all too much for Mark Hicks. You won't hear it, but Hicks told our cameraman if things don't pick up, he'd throw himself off a mountain. 20 minutes on, the team pull over again, and Mark Hicks procures vital, yet unnecessary, and stolen equipment. Did you steal some stuff? It was free. How'd you find that? Yeah, it was in Switzerland. <laughs> Switzerland holds many delights for the team. Stunning mountain passes, glacial gorges, freshly cut grass. <laughs> the altitude the more it affects Mark's very small brain. In a moment of madness he decides to transform the van into a rural assault vehicle with staggering results. First he stole that strapping then he stuck our tyre to the bonnet and now he's sticking the fuel can to the bonnet. Mark would you care to just take uh, it? No, no! Explain. No! Hey. Switzerland don't explain. The altitude also has an adverse effect on Jonathan Dobney making him think crazy. Well, we came up the mountainside and this man with a goat uh, stopped us. He said, I fancy a part exchange, my, my cart for your van. Uh, it's been reliable, it's, uh, it's 400 years old. It's How many miles has it got on the car? About 4 million. Um, really fast downhill, struggles a bit uphill, due to the lack of, uh, lack of power. These mountains are dangerous to any vehicle costing less than £100, be it Leyland Daff, a shopper, or a car parked with Disco Divas. Team Scaramanga are keen to lend a hand. Team Scaramanga to the rescue! Yeah. 
except for team captain Jonathan Dobney, who tragically burnt his hand in a van-related accident. Look, it's hot water. Yeah. You could get some up. That was all, all over my hand, all over. Not just a bit of I did nothing. Um, as soon as Mark mounted the wheel um, on the bonnet, I, um, I expressed my concerns. Um, particularly for the windscreen itself, it, it looked quite vulnerable, and I, um, I, I mentioned that. I think you'll find that on the footage um, that you'll see later. Um, so we drove a, a short while, and the engine overheated. We stopped, um, and Mark was in, a, he was in quite a bad mood for some reason, and he just opened the bonnet really aggressively um, and just put the tyre straight through the windscreen. Oh, I wish you could have got that. The bonnet just fell on your head. I'll get it in the proper hole. Oh! That's a oh! <laughs> oh yes. You just explain what happened there. We just smashed the window screen. Oh, what the f***? <laughs> <laughs> How did you do it? What happened? But really? We re really f***. Yeah. So I open the bonnet, do all the stuff, the bonnet falls upon my head. Johnny runs to my rescue, goes, let me help you. I'm like, okay, let's lift this bonnet up. We both lift it simultaneously. I'm quite angry at the bonnet at this point. So I say, I say lift it, just, just, just lift it a bit higher, a bit higher, a bit higher, a bit higher. The windscreen shatters. From that point, I was condemned throughout the rest of the trip. Is there insurance cover windscreens in, uh, in Switzerland? I thought the whole journey was. F but even a catastrophe like this can't spoil the scenery. As long as you're not looking through the windscreen. There's one, one particular song which, uh, which springs to the forefront of my mind time and time again. Um, and I can't I remember the name of the song. All I can remember is the way it goes. And it's just. And it goes a bit like that. It's now 10 o'clock. The team are seriously behind, driving through the night, a small convoy of fellow stragglers soldier on. Will they make it through the border? Will the windscreen hold out? Find out next time on The Road to Naples.